Hey everyone, this is Sean. Today let's think about how to design an AI agent system like a pro. It doesn't matter if you're technical or not, if you're a product manager, designer, data scientist, or computer scientist, it does not matter. The goal here really is to understand how do we think holistically about, you know, starting from the front end all the way to the back end database and setting up AI agents so that your app will be smarter than just the traditional SaaS product. So today's example is about how do we design this agent system for the e-commerce direct to customer brands, D2C brands, to manage their customer support. So as we know that customer support is a field that traditionally has a lot of human involvement when it comes to things like return products, exchange products, or you know, asking about the status of where my product is when it's being shipped. And uh, for a lot of the e-commerce companies, they probably cannot afford to hire a bunch of like call centers or message replying agents. So this will be a perfect use case for them to you know, increase their response rate as well as you know, um, improve the satisfaction for their customers. So now let's jump in and think about how do we think through this step by step, okay? So the first thing is that our goal today is that we want to make sure that we will have um, over 70% automation in this customer support flow, which means that the other 30% will probably be like, we're gonna loop the humans back into uh, the conversation when uh, an e-commerce site is talking to a customer, right? And also we wanna make sure that the customer satisfaction rate, CSAT, is greater than 4.5 out of five, right? And last but not least, we wanna make sure that the response with the 50% of the percentile of the customers is below one second, and then 95% of your customers will get a response under 2.5 seconds. Why is this important? This is important because if the response time is too long, it really affects your satisfaction from your customers, okay? So this is our goal. And um, let's also think about what is our scope today? Our scope is very simple. We wanna focus on returns, exchanges, and where is my order, okay? So let me just delete this flow and then let's walk through it together. So firstly, let's think about the rules of this scope. In order to return to the customer, we need to make sure that the products, for example, will only be returned if it's bought over under 30 days before. And it must be returned in good conditions, right? Otherwise, the AI agents probably will just allow any products to be returned at any time, which is not what we want, right? The second rule we think about is, um, how do we think about the refund policy? Right. In this case, most companies probably have a refund policies, for example, if it's under $50 and if they're using a human call center uh, as a service, then they will automatically let it to um, return the product. But if it's over or equal to $50, then they probably need to loop in their manager. We want to mimic the exact user behavior here. The third one is called exchange policy. So if a customer want to exchange the product, they also need to make sure a few things. Um, it needs to be in good conditions and certain categories of products cannot be returned because, for example, if it's food and you already open it, you cannot really return it, right? And lastly, the, um, how do we route back to a human, right? And there could be all sorts of <clears throat> scenarios here. Um, it could be because the user directly asked that they want to talk to a human, or we have detected that there's some very negative uh, emotions <laughs> in the chat so that uh, we must uh, involve a human being to basically provide emotional support for the customer, okay? Um, from a backend and database perspective, there are a few things that we should consider in this case. Let me just paste it right in. The first thing is that when and how much is the peak for requests per second and about the seasonality as well. Imagine this is Black Friday or Christmas time, then probably there will be a lot more people doing online shopping versus the other period of time of the year. And also we need to think about how we're gonna store all the chat history, um, information about the transactions, about return and logistics. Do we store it in a relational database or do we store it in a vector database? So here's a concept we need to introduce for AI agents, which is vector database. What it really means is that traditionally, we basically define data tables in, um, imagine you have an Excel sheet there are rows and columns. Every column means a different feature. Every row means like a different entry, right? Um, but in order to search some of the, say, unstructured data, like the return policy or refund policy, these kind of things are not gonna be stored in traditional like table format. They're probably a paragraph or a PDF, right? So the way to do it is that we can store this information in a vector database in which we will embed each word or each 
you know, paragraphs into uh, vectors, right? So what we mean by that is that we're going to turn these words into numbers that are in high dimensions. If you're really not from a technical background, just think of it as like, we got to digitize something. Like if you're looking at a photo on your iPhone, it will be stored in digits. And then when they're stored in digits, you'll be able to search them by calculating some similarity between photos. Similarly here, we're allowing it to calculate similarities between uh, vectors, right? So given this current scope, the goal, the rules, the backend database, let's jump in to start designing the agent system here, okay? The first thing we're gonna do is that we need to think about when will a user start to interact with our system, right? So in this case, our user channels are gonna be website chat and emails, okay? So if you think about this more holistically, we're not gonna directly allow anybody to start using the system. So we're gonna start um, doing some authentication first. So here, we're gonna introduce a gateway. A gateway is going to deal with the authentication, single sign-on, or PII, which is for uh, privacy of the user, or you're gonna think through the rate limit, like how many times people can actually use um, this product, request for this product, and checking for uh, duplication. So all these kind of things are sort of, we need to ch double check with the gateway. So let's add a bit of arrow to confirm this relationship. Before we continue to process any information, we need to finish the authentication first. And also, in order to load the previous chat and emails, we need to query our data from a relational database. Remember, we talked about the rectangle data tables. So what happens here is basically user auth fetch the chats and emails. Okay. We're going to start think about how would the agent help with uh, talking to these conversations from customers. Okay. Imagine a customer has just asked a question. Ask a question. They said, I want to return my Prada X. You probably would think, hey, um, okay, let me try to check my policy. Let me try to understand uh, what do I do next, right? So exactly for AI agents, the first thing we do is that we're gonna introduce this thing called a, a router agent. What it does is that it's trying to understand the intent of the question so that it knows what to do next. A router agent, there we go. So this router agent, We'll try to understand the user intent and then decide the agent routing. Remember that one of our goals is that we, we need to make sure that the response time for 50% of the users is always under one second. The way we do that is that we need to introduce another agent called a Q&A agent. What this Q&A agent does is that after you get the first question, I want to return my product X, you want to allow yourself a little bit of time for the router to think through it. Right? It depends on the exact situation, like how many steps is gonna happen right after the router agent. You want the conversation to flow like natural. So perhaps after you ask the first question, it will flow into the Q&A agent, and then that will, that will start to speak to the user all the time. And they'll probably start to respond to the user um, by saying something like, oh, thanks for asking the question. Let me just check it for you. And then start showing them like a thinking process. Uh, respond to the user. Um, real time, okay? So here for the router agent, let's think about the edge case first, right? If the router agent realized that this customer is very angry, like the customers say that I, I must deal with, like, or they ask a very, very complex question and we think that our agent decides that it's, it's way uh, beyond the confidence that I have to deal with myself, we need to have a mechanism to allow it to trigger looping the human back into this agentic system so that the humans will take over, so that our overall customer satisfaction rate will not be affected, right? So I'm just gonna add in this human in the loop. Oh, this is so difficult to use. So now, in this case, the human will start to approve or disapprove any request from the users. If the router agent decides now that this is a valid request, and let me just double check if it fits with our policy so that I will process the rest of the steps for you then we will allow it to move on to the next step, right? So the next step, we're calling it a planner agent. Let me just move it back here. Decide to take the return route action. So what happens now is that because the router agent understood the intent, which is to um, return the product, then it will start to call the return planning agent. 
so that the planning agent for return will start to process what's going to happen next. A very in important concept is called functional calling. So what will happen is that we will prepare a very long list of functions that will be available as tools for AI agents to select from. And I'll show you a few examples, which is, for instance, um, if the user needs to return, you need to introduce a Stripe API that will allow them to get refund or start paying for another product as an alternative. A Shopify agent, which will allow us to uh, pull in the information about how to, how, what's the track, what's the order status right now, and what is the return merchandise authorization uh, right now, RMA, and um, perhaps for some exchanges actions as well. And also things like, oh, where's my order, right? So we got to pull in the API tool that will check some third-party logistics, 3PL, to, um, to understand uh, where the product it, it is right now in real time. And also, for example, if the user is managing some of their customer relationship information in a CRM system, then they will be able to pull in some CRM APIs to start writing or fetching some deal from their pipeline or create and update some tickets, okay? These are the tools that we're talking about here. So if we move back to where we were, this planner agent will decide what tool we're gonna call. And in this case, the tools we're gonna to call are the return API, which is from Shopify, and the Stripe API, which is for processing payments, right? The reason why I say there's a bit of a catch here is that this planning agent really depends on um, the logic for finishing this task. It could be a deterministic workflow as well which means that we could just use some rules to process the rest of the steps, especially when the steps are very fixed. For example, if we know that the user is just gonna return the products, then what we do is basically, okay, check Shopify, right? Try to understand if um, the product is still um, a bit okay for, for return or for exchange, right? And then trigger um, Stripe API to process all the payments related information, right? So. Actually, one very good practice is that if we can reduce the amount of automation of using agents for cases where it doesn't really need an agent, then your system will be more reliable. In this case, just for the sake of presentation, I'm going to show you how to think through the agentic way of a planner for return rather than the deterministic way, but just a very good thing to keep in mind. Okay, so let's move on. So in order for the return planner agent to function, it needs to firstly check some return policies to make sure that it's actually fitting into the scenario that we're talking about, right? So in this case, we need to finally start looking into vector database, which will include things like frequently asked questions, policies, all these kind of unstructured data that are in paragraphs. So that it's, because it's not easy to search in the table, so it will be easier for us to search semantically using vector embeddings. This process is also called RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, right? It's a very fancy word and a buzzword at the same time, but it's important to understand that it's basically just fetching information through a semantic search so that we will get more relevant information about this company's re return policy, which the large language model does not even know, right? Because this is a private data and we want to feed this private data into our AI agent. So I'm also going to paste the uh, policy and guardrails um, services here, right? So what this one does is they basically want to double check if it fits with the policy, right? So there's a bit of a decision-making uh, mechanism here. Just from a diagram perspective, let's say check policy via vector DB. And then this vector DB's information will go through this policy check. And we're going to say, okay, align with policy inform the agent. So this is a little thinking process for the planner agent to go through before we trigger any functional calls. You will need to define very clearly in the prompts for this return planner agent so that it knows that you need to firstly refer to all the checks. And if you realize that one agent is probably doing too many tasks, feel free to split it up into smaller ones so that it will do the exact one thing so that it does not hallucinate. Here we're sort of a little bit oversimplifying the situation, but just to make sure that you define your types and define everything very clearly so that your prompts, your agent will understand what it needs to do exactly, right? So after we finish the RAG check from the vector database, our planner agent finally understood, okay, we need to trigger some APIs, okay? So the first API they're gonna trigger is Shopify API, 
if it fits the policy call Shopify API for return. And if the next step is about returning the money, then we should also call the Stripe API right here. So after the Stripe API has been introduced, which means that we have finished the um, money return, so the Stripe API should return the information back to the return planner and say, okay, um, payment, refund, done, right? After this, the return planner agent should be updating all the context back to this Q&A agent because this Q&A agent is really doing the conversation with the original user channels, which includes the web chat or the emails, right? So imagine this Q&A agent is just like the central brain or the CEO of the company who needs to do all the communication with their customers. And then the rest of these people are just part of the organization who's doing the task, right? Just that the router agent is sort of at a higher level, return planner is the one that the router agent decides to route to, right? And then you could also route to exchange planner or you know, where is my order planner, all these kind of tools, right? But after this planner has done its job, what it should do is that you should always update the information or the context back to the Q&A agent, right? So the Q&A agent is like, okay, so um, return the latest updates, the latest status of return back to Q&A agent to talk to the user. So this can also include situations when the question or the product doesn't fit into the policy for return. In this case, we will also update the latest information back to the Q&A agent. So they will be able to talk to um, the user, right? Respond to the user real time. So you can see that we currently have a pretty solid system right here for the goal we have, right? So what do we still need to do? Few things. Number one is that as an agentic system, we should always be thinking about observability, metrics, and evaluations, okay? Remember our goal is that we need to make sure 70% are automation, 30% are looping back to human, right? And then the satisfaction rate should be over 4.5, and the response time should be um, this much, right? So what we do is that we gotta track the relevant metrics across the entire system to make sure that these metrics are being met, these goals are being met, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing is that it depends on if um, this current website or this current client is already dealing with some external, like say CRM systems. Perhaps there's, there should be some automatic triggers as well for us to write back to the CRMs, okay? So we could add something like this here, a CRM system that will fetch, write, deal pipeline, or create update tickets for their internal team to manage um, you know, some of the processes, right? So I'm just gonna add a simple arrow here. Okay, cool. So we got a pretty solid um, system right here. So again, this is a very simple overview on how do you think about the agentic system um, from a non-technical background from a non-technical perspective, but also I know that I have introduced quite a lot of technical concepts here too, but um, if you are technical, you realize that there are a lot of things that we're missing out, right? There are a lot of things that we didn't mention, for example, about scalability, about you know things that are related to like the request per second, seasonality, all these server side of things. I think at the end of the day, if you're a product manager, you will need to discuss with your engineering leader anyways to figure these things out. But you need to have like this basic concept of uh, what we need in order to uh, set up this product ready for production. I hope this is helpful. I hope uh, you have learned something from this. And let me know if you like this kind of format of video. I'm happy to make more. And I'll probably also be making some videos to explain how do you actually build a system like this with code. So stay tuned. If you like this video, like and subscribe and make a comment down below. Thanks very much. Cheers.